Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2. Exquisite timing on legendary Iron Man with uh, enabled permanent dark events. My name is Saiken and this is going to be our new challenge. Uh, whether or not we're going to even make it, it's unsure at this point. The game hasn't been super kind with us from a randomization standpoint, but we could get an engineer on this quote-unquote easy mission. Just hacking the resistance computer it is. Uh, let's move in and try to equip our uh, our team. I mentioned already that we're going to go for a full uh, two additional rookie kind of setup. A reason for that being I want to get two further promotions out of it. Normally I would um, get a flashbang grenade and I would get um, an, a med kit. The problem that I'm seeing with that is we currently have 130-ish um, resources and we need 125 for the proving ground, so I'll keep that bank, which means essentially we're currently without resources. We can, however, um, just slightly edit our characters, and that is due to uh, thanks to the old world uh, rifles, uh, or to the old world weapons more in general. Those are weapons from um, uh, from the standard game. Uh, you get them if you play through the um, DLC and finish everything on silver medal or higher. So that's where you can get them. They are not a mod or anything. We mentioned we're playing uh, that I'm playing completely modless. So that is it. Uh, unfortunately, rookies can't uh, get them. Um, and there's only one per class, which means this is going to be our squad, and uh, we are off to save the engineer. Let's see how difficult that's going to be, guys. And here we go, just freshly landed in the middle of a minefield. The access point we're after is just ahead. Move to secure the area. Expect hostile resistance. Good, let's take a look. We got seven turns. Um, there is a huge um, bridge uh, right next to that location. So that's pretty good because we can use the high ground. We will need to speed through this though with um, the Reaper missing. Uh, essentially, we'll need to speed up and see how far we can even go. I'd like to take high ground here, like I said. The most important piece at the moment is essentially getting as close as we can to the location. We know the first pack is here. It's probably one more pack right next to the objective, which means there's a very low chance that there is a pack on top. Let's get our sniper to here. Good to go. Rolling out. And yeah, it's not the perfect uh, start, but with only seven turns to go, there's not much room for maneuver. Let us, um, yeah, that, it's a difficult choice, to be honest. This here could, uh, oh no, we can't even get in here because there is glass right next to the wall. If we were to move all the way over here, That'll be a long, long walk, but we would be rewarded with high ground. I think we're going to do that. Mike is testing the water. No one's there. Perfect. Which means everyone else is going to follow. And since they are so far away, I'm even considering positioning ourselves to he uh, over to here.
Good. Five more turns to go. The game by now would have expected us to engage that pack. I did not do it. So we're going to risk to um, basically trigger multiple packs. Uh, we know there is no pack over here, so might as well take a look as early as we can, because if I would have moved all the way here, there is a chance that there would could have been a pack down here, um, which would have revealed us. Good. Moving all the way up here. Now we got the infamous high ground. And we know that our target is kind of over here. Let's start making our way closer to the target. Nothing. Interesting. And very likely nothing as well if we're moving even further. Yep. That's not the worst uh, situation. Beat, beat. In a perfect scenario, one of the enemy's uh, enemy packs would be coming out and allowing us to ambush them. Uh, realistically speaking, we're probably not going to be that lucky. We know there is a pack underneath us, and that we're probably going to uh, that we are probably going to trigger one way or the other. And we have heard that there is a pack in here. Uh, that is absolutely not surprising, given that there will be always a pack between you and the objective. So, taking that as a given, we know that there is one pack. We only got three more turns, so. Can't really stand here and hide for much longer. We could move over here. My main concern is whether or not uh, this sectoid pack down here is still around. We could move over here. Yeah, but no matter how we're turning it, we're most likely going to trigger two packs. Yep, there we go. Not the end of the world, but also certainly not the best case scenario. Let's start with the obvious cases to unravel this uh, unfortunate situation. It's one down. We could try to hit him with a grenade. Not the worst option. Could move ourselves up to here. Not terribly afraid about the sectoid. He will use his mind spin, even if he has us in a flanking position. Could move to here. It's almost close enough to hack the resistance computer, plus we would be getting a flanking maneuver out of it. Now let's try to do that. It's a bit of a ha um, Hail Mary play, because there is always the chance that he will basically um, 
uh, still try to hit us with his uh, little laser rifle. But it's much more likely that he's going to use his mind spin. So that should be fine. Were to throw a grenade, would probably not reach the inside, would it? No. Cover removal and a bit of damage would be absolutely fantastic. Could go over here. That will probably change things. Because now, if he would have a bit more muscle in his arms, he'd be able to throw the goddamn grenade far enough to hit. Yeah, but of course. So that's the best we can get. I'll take it because we don't have a really good alternative and I want to keep the high ground. Good news about that is we um, have the Advent Trooper flanked and that'll lead to a kill. Good enough. Now let's see what the mind spin will tell us. He decides to go for a shot. Sectors have abysmal aim, so. Um, for those of you thinking that that was the worst idea ever, um, it's not that bad. Now it is that bad because now we've triggered the third pack. Uh, that's officially really bad now. And we gotta deal with the sectoid. Like, l pretty much literally this turn. Move into full cover for next turn. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, we can start the hack next turn. Still gives us enough time. The sectoid needs to lose his cover because he's flanking us. And although high ground would be so, so, so much better, realistically speaking, we gotta go down here and get the sectoid. At least maximum damage, not a crit though, but still. I'd like to move a bit away over here and see if we can finish the sectoid. Yep, there we go. Let's focus fire at its finest. We can unfortunately only take half cover here. Hmm. Use the grenade, use the grenade, use the grenade. I'll save my grenade for a tiny bit later. Over here would be full cover and we would be flanking. However, those guys could move in. So we'll just take the half cover, I suppose.
High ground was much, much better. But beggars can't be choosers. We have triggered the entirety of all enemies in just one go. Uh, so what are you even expecting? Shot into full cover. That was close. Up those two. Shit. All right. I can't move. Minus one five. The advent network terminal is shutting down. This is your last chance to secure the data. All right. We're going to use our last chance here. Oh, look at that! Permanent increase of our hacking stat. Oh, but scanning times uh, reduced would be great as well. Now nah, we're going for enemy protocol. It's just too good. Well, that's a very, very nice bonus if we were able to uh, to survive that. Fortunately, can't hit him and the entirety of of the cover here. <laughs> also, can't move into flank. Yeah, we gotta deal with the Overwatch first. Did not kill him completely. Is this here essentially going to... Yeah, that would be in range, okay. Gotta hate it when the line... Uh, when the vision isn't clear. Okay, so this here would not give us a clear line of sight. This here would be giving us a clear line of sight. Hmm. Good, we're moving in just a tiny bit closer. Again, full cover. That's the last bit of our cover removal. And let's start with the sectoid. That'll be a double kill because we have also killed the zombie. And we're moving just a tiny bit to get uh, a chance to kill this guy, but unfortunately not killing him completely. All right.
Okay, let's start our flanking maneuver. We're in full cover. For triggering the overwatch, that's fine. Good, how about we're moving in all the way up to here. Double time. Good, next up we're giving Hayward here an April call to make her cover even better. Before starting to take 50 50 shots that are missing. And over here, we're finally taking advantage of our much better positioning and squad side because we have nice little uh, fire uh, fire lines that's a shot into full cover Incoming fire. that's a potential another shot into full cover this time we're being hit uh, it's unfortunate Fifty-fifty. there we go down. down. Moving into half cover, but a nice little flanking position. And finishing the ex-post. Well, it was not the cleanest mission. We took one hit and uh, we have like triggered every single one of them at the same time so fighting against nine soldiers is not how those missions are supposed to be played um, I was probably too intrigued by the high ground and took the risk of um, yeah taking more than one pack at the same time generally you can do that uh, but it's it's a risky gamble um, that can lead to injuries and we are back so, got three promotions. Let's hope that uh, Elliot Sane here is going to be a grenadier. Well, he's in assault. That's not the end of the world. And Mike Bravo will only be out for 12 days, so we can promote him to the grenadier. Congratulations, Mike, and good job. We got also another promotion here. We're definitely going to spend it on medical protocol, not even going to um, think about it. Hayward is probably going to be our highest ranking soldier throughout the run. Um, got another advanced stock and a few corpses. Good, new objective. Research, uh, resistance communication, uh, fly to the Black Side region and make contact. We got ourselves an engineer, which also allows us for the first time chance to hunker down in a defensive pos uh, posture after a movement action. Wow, Mike, that's a that's a after the first move action. That's a really, really, really bad trade. Um, holy shit, that is bad. Uh, that's 92 and here we would give, be getting 76. Yeah, we're taking 92. Gotta optimize everything, including the clearing of debris here. In terms of the armory, let's color code our new soldiers and we can also upgrade our rookie. Rabbit uh, has become another ranger. Perfect, good for her. We got two rangers now. Um, let's color code Mike. There we go. 
looks uh, like a grenadier to me, and Sane will be color coded as well. There we go, buddy. You are a true ranger now. Good. Um, we got a few squaddies, one corporal. Uh, the tired mechanic is certainly going to kick our asses a bit more from time to time. I will just need to ignore that. And this is really our base squad. Um, might be able to recruit one or two more over time. But for now, that is it. Local resistance forces in the area can put you into the site. Okay, so we got a couple of options here. Number one... We need to um, make contact with the New India region and essentially as soon as possible do the Advent Black Side mission. Um, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, the next research could be or should be going into research communica uh, resistance communications. That way we at least can make contact. Uh, we're not going to get some more intel for now. There are additional supplies. I would take them and maybe we can get some gear, at least a very basic gear for now. That's the research of the Advent Officer. It gives us access to the infirmary, a uh, building that we're probably not going to um, uh, build in this run. The Advent op uh, Officer's Autopsy itself, super, super helpful if we can uh, get it. Um, resistance communication also pretty helpful for, um, for making contact. The Advent Officer's Corpse itself offers us the option to go for Proving Grounds. That's what we want to do next. So we're going to start with that right away. Uh, in a normal run, it would be potentially something that I'm actually delaying quite a bit uh, because uh, you can um, you can get some um, reduction of the time on autopsies if the game uh, progresses. So you are effectively net-net uh, saving some time. Uh, this is not the case here. Uh, we want to continue as far as possible, or as fast as possible, March 8th, and we're already uh, one mission in. A couple of injuries, but also a couple of promotions on the upside. Another 51 supplies. And there is an engineer. That's not too bad. The game is helping us. Uh, that was a good find, a great find, to be honest. Got ourselves 182 supplies, meaning we can also build some items for the next uh, mission. And here's our Advent Officer Autopsy. So uh, that'll allow us to do a few things. Proving Grounds is now available. And with that, as soon as we can get the school jack, um, we can essentially follow the golden path even further. All right, Proving Grounds, yes. Inspired modular weapons, that's good. Question is, are we going f uh, to go for that? Modular weapons simply leads to better weapons, quote unquote simply. The way that I'm looking at it is, it's three days that I'm wasting uh, for something that uh, I otherwise wouldn't do. It, however, gives us also the option to at least put, um, put modifications in our weapons. So, Although it pains me to do three days of modular weapons research, we might want to do that so that we can get the advanced stocks and a couple of other uh, weapon modifications um, updated. So let's do it. And right afterwards, we're going for resistance communications. I will send word as soon as we have something of note. If that breaks the run at the end of the day, then... I'd be incredibly um, sorry to uh, uh, to have uh, to have not moved with the golden path. Good, we got another high priority mission right here, um, giving us a scientist, a hundred intel, a grenadier, and a sharpshooter on top of it. Wow, that is uh, pretty dank. 
and there will be loss in there. So that's a really, 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 really good mission, which we should not um, attempt lightly. Let's take a look at our soldiers. Uh, we're definitely going to go for that mission because it's too good to path it. Um, we do have a Reaper and a Ranger. Two wounded soldiers. If we're um, if we're taking the specialist and the sharpshooter, they are not only tired but essentially wounded. Uh, that's uh, that's a bit iffy, and they might get um, negative mental conditions, which we also don't want. The other option is simply taking Wrath um, and Sane and um, adding two rookies to the mix, which is probably the better idea. And the other train of thought is. Um, what's the fastest way of leveling them up and that is doing missions however if we're now going on to a mission they are probably wounded for 12 ish maybe longer days so although I would sh in short term probably have a higher um, uh, level soldier in long term it wouldn't really do us any good so what we're going to do is we're going to go in with the reaper the ranger and two rookies and that is the decision here three days until clearing of the alien debris which is fine once uh, that has happened we can start building the proving grounds probably need to speed them up because we really uh, want to do it as fast as possible uh, thanks to the second engineer, uh, we can continue getting some more alien debris out of the way. Um, and this might be a GTS even. Um, not sure if we have enough power, uh, but it could be a GTS. Um, good. Anyways, that's the end of mission number two, guys. If you enjoy really challenging runs and if you enjoy this challenge in particular hit the like button and leave a comment down below you might want to uh, tell me um, uh, specifically for this mission uh, what kind of uh, starting uh, buildings you are preferring this year is a bit of a different start so um, your build order would be interesting are you sometimes deviating from the classical build order is i guess the question other than that, hit the subscribe button and uh, continue watching this episode, uh, this, uh, this series, guys. See you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.